Okay guys, if you are designing any industrial steel building, in that case, the designing of roof truss and the fixing of this roof truss is very much important. Okay, so this video is going to be about the fixing of roof truss. I am not discussing anything about the design of roof truss, rather I will discuss about the fixing of roof truss. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so let's start today's topic. So at the very first, I would like to just recap the truss basics, okay. So any type of truss, if you are supposed to design any type of truss, whether it is a Pratt truss or fan truss or in case of a trapezoidal truss, okay. So to design this, what you have to do, very first thing is you have to find out the force in each and every member and for that what you have to do, you have to assign each and every load, whether it is dead load, live load or this is wind load okay then you simply find out the reactions okay to find out the reactions the basic assumption is one end of the truss is hinged okay and another is roller okay or you can say one end is simply pinned and another is a roller so this is the basic assumption before analyzing any type of truss okay so in reality you cannot provide the uh, pin support like this or the roller support like this okay so to provide this pinned action and roller action what you have to do that is the topic of today's video okay so to provide the hinged or this pinned end okay what you have to do let's say this is the uh, truss member and you have got it from the design of each and every member. So here I have used this uh, picture from Arjun Ajmani. Okay, so this is a double angle 75, 75 and 6. Okay, so at the end here you can see this is the gusset. So this is the gusset. Okay, so up to this point this is your truss. Now you have to fix this one. Let's say you are supposed to install this whole truss over a uh, steel column. Okay, so it is a steel column. This also can be uh, a RCC column. Okay, so in both the cases, to install this truss first, you have to provide this angle base plate. Okay, so this is the angle base plate. This one. Okay, the top one. And this angle base plate is looks something like this where you insert a bolt here to connect this angle with the main truss okay so the bolt is connected with this gusset actually and this lower hole is used to connect this angle base plate with the lower part okay or you can say this is used to connect this angle base plate with the steel column okay but as this is a pin you can use a plain hole okay so this is about the hinged part but what about the roller part why the roller part is needed well if this is a truss okay so this is the steel truss and let's say you are installing this at uh, 20 degree centigrade temperature now the environment temperature is let's say 50 degree centigrade okay so there is a temperature difference of 30 degree centigrade so due to this temperature difference what will happen as this is a steel member the stress will simply expand okay so that is the reason we provide this roller so how we can accommodate this expansion well very simple just instead of providing this simple hole just let me erase this one okay just instead of providing this simple hole if you can provide a slot like this okay so if you provide a slot like this let's say this is the roller end okay so in that case this top angle plate okay not the bottom one not the bottom one this top angle which is connected with the column just you have to provide this slotted hole instead of plain hole so let's say uh, the diameter 
of the anchor bolt you are supposed to use is 20 mm and based on the thermal thermal expansion calculation let's say the expansion is uh, let's say 10 mm so what should be the slotted length simply 20 mm plus 10 mm let's say provide your 32 mm slotted hole as simple as that so now you have provided the hinge as well as the roller support in your truss okay so now another aspect of fixing the truss is uh, you have to anchor okay so you know that due to wind you will experience the upward thrust okay so all these loads are due to wind load okay so due to upward wind load what will happen in your support you will have some tension okay or you can say that your truss uh, tends to blow away from your structure so for that what you have to do you have to anchor it okay so in our previous cases uh, if it is a steel column okay let's say you are supporting your truss over a steel column in that case the design of the anchor bolt here which is connecting this upper angle and this lower angle okay the, so the diameter of this anchor bolt should be such that it is capable of carrying the tension that is being generated due to this wind forces okay but let's say instead of having a steel column let's say you are supporting your truss over a concrete in that case what you have to do again here you can see these are the angle okay so the base plate or the base angle remains same but the bottom portion become concrete so in bottom you will not have any angle like this okay here in the bottom also you had angle but here as the column is rcc you need not provide any angle at the bottom only at the top you will have angle now this is the hole and you simply insert this anchor bolt okay again the capacity of this anchor bolt should be such that it can counter this uplift forces due to wind load okay i am not going into the detail of designing this anchor bolt because i have already provided a separate video for how to design the anchor bolt okay so now i think it is clear to you how to provide the pinned support and roller support as well as how to cater the uplift pressure due to the wind load during installation of any truss okay so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it